All right. Um, so this is a story about my daddy issues. But, well, my parents didn't mess up. They were, they were all right. They did everything good. Not, not too serious, but I kind of always wished that we were closer. Um, you know, just very surface level conversations, never really getting into it. And so I think for the rest of my life and including now, um, I've been searching for closer community. And that's probably part of the reason I'm here. Um, but I think the place I started to actually get that close community and actually fill some of that, that hole that I wanted in my life was uh, at Jewish sleepaway camp. And so I'm not Jewish. That's another story. Um, but we'll put that aside. Um, I, maybe something about my parents being emotionally repressed with their Christian families. Who knows? But um, this Jewish sleepaway camp, you go for two months, you make the best friends of your life, and you have the strongest culture and community I've ever experienced. And I think for a similar reason, my, what feels like my central life goal is to be the best father I can be. Um, and the place you get to do your test run for that is being a Jewish sleepaway camp counselor. Um, so I had, my first year I had these 13 year old boys for two months. Uh, they screamed and they yelled and they argued and I had to try to handle it. And I think like regular parents got thrown in and just had to figure it out. Um, and now it was my second year being counselor for the same kids, which I was very lucky to have happen. Um, and the thing that's amazing about being a camp counselor is these kids really, really look up to you. Um, like you can create any imaginary world or imaginary game and they're just ready to play and they're ready to join in. And, you know, I went, I was a camper for seven years. And so I wanted to one, be the best father I could be and get my practice running and two, give my campers the experience that my counselors gave me. Um, and so most other counselors, it's like 10 PM and you're off work. And so you can go out and get food with your counselor friends who you were also campers with. But I really preferred to spend time with my campers and give them the best experience I could. And so one night I remembered a game that my counselors made up for me and I couldn't remember all the rules cause I was 12 when it happened. And so I just made up my own rules like they probably did. And so I took a deck of cards, each suit was a certain category, and I made up a bunch of tasks. And when the kids did the task, when my campers did the task, they were all on a team, they got points. And what are the points for? Nothing, but it doesn't matter because they're ready to play in this imaginary world. And so you flip over a card, okay, four of hearts, the floor is lava. Everyone is immediately off the ground. <laughs> then you got like, one suit was you had to guess certain facts about your friends. Um, and so you had to test your knowledge and how well you knew them. But we're building, we're playing for like two hours. They're building up points. They're losing points when they don't do the tasks. And I decided it's time to end. So this is the final task. You win or lose based on this. The campers had to, um, one of my campers was Kevin Rosoff. The final task was they had 38 seconds. They had to run to another bunk. Kevin Rosoff's little brother was asleep in that bunk. They had to pick up Kevin Rosoff's little brother, sprint him back like 50 feet, open the door, go up the stairs, and bring him back to where we were. 38 seconds, go. They sprint out. The door slams open. They're running. I hear them scream in the bunk. Every, it's, they're like all 12. They're screaming. They wake everyone up, take Kevin Rosoff's little brother. They're coming back in. They sprint up the stairs. Lev has him in his arms like this. He woke up 15 seconds ago. He's basically still asleep. He drops him on the floor. Sorry. He drops him on the floor. They only have five seconds left. Picks him back up the quickest I've ever seen. Brings him to me. And they win the game. Um, good work. Good work. Um, but <laughs> hopefully I didn't use up too much time there. I love that story. Um, but uh, so then it's the end of camp. Um, all my campers are going to leave, and I'm not old enough. So even though I'll be a counselor next year, I won't be able to be their counselor. Um, so this is coming up to my end of my time with them. And there's a sad song session. They play all the sad songs. All the campers are there with their arms around each other, and they're crying, and they're going to their friends, and they're going to me, and they're like, I love you guys so much. I'm going to miss you. 
it's not 10 months till we see each other again. Um, and so my campers are telling me they love me and they're going to miss me. But I'm like, I've been through this like eight times. Like, I get it. <laughs> but then I kind of realized like, oh, like, you know, this was a really special time with these campers and I'm not going to have them again. Um, and I think about those moments that I created for them and giving them what my counselors gave me and also try, trying to learn to be the best parent I could be in the future. And my camper Gabe comes up to me <laughs> and <laughs> Gabe goes, Harry, I know you're probably not going to be our counselor next year, but I'm going to write a letter to the director of the camp explaining why you should. <laughs> and I like literally almost fall down. Um, <laughs> I just burst out crying the hardest I've ever cried in my life. And even though I'm crying and the theme is happy, this was like such an interesting mix of like uh, overwhelming love, but also sadness and catharsis, but also joy. And I think the place the joy was coming from was that uh, for my life goal of being the best father I could be, um, I, think that, <laughs> I think that was a very genuine stamp of approval from Gabe that I did pretty good on my test run and I'm just waiting till I'm 35. Thank you. <laughs>